Hey, you guys, you are hanging with Lang, and how are you today? I have a great show in store for you. We're calling it Pop Goes the Wednesday. I have this icon of pop culture. He knows everything. He is the pop cultural guru. His name is Brian Baltazar. I'll introduce him to you in a moment. But first, you guys, I want you, I want to see your beautiful comments. I want you to share this. Just share it. Just you're seeing it on your own timeline, your own page. Just share it or start a watch party. That's how we've been growing the numbers. More and more people are watching. And you know, I pour my heart and soul out to you every single day. It's the least you can do for me. And I would love, so just hit the share or just hit um, watch party. It'll be right there. That's all I need from you. And uh, so I'm watching for your comments here. I also on StreamYard, which I'm loving, I want to be able to see your name uh, when you post a comment. You don't have to, but if you want me to see who it's from, just go to StreamYard.com. Just do that and click on the blue button. That's all you need to do and only do it once. And then I'll have your, uh, you'll be able to comment on StreamYard anytime you want live while we're doing this show. Uh, or you don't have to, but it's easier for me to see you that way. And we'll wait and as soon as you can, you're just going to share this. There we go. I love seeing you guys. Yay. All right. So a couple other things, just a little bit of baby business before we go, you know, if you want to support the support, if you want to support the show, uh, you know, you can go to my store, my don't make me hate you items all there, molanga.com forward slash store, or look at what I got. I have don't make me, I have don't make me hate you masks. They're a big hit wherever I go. Again, at the just go to my webpage, Mo Lang, and, and you'll see everything there. One other piece of business here, my friends. Of course, chuck a buck, 10, a thousand, a million. Be my sugar daddy, my sugar mama, I don't care. PayPal.me forward slash Mo Lang and Venmo at Mo Lang. And you know the routine. Okay, so I want to tell you this. I love this guy. I We crossed paths years ago at Don't Tell Mama, a really cool gay, gay friendly cabaret in Midtown Manhattan. I'm so impressed with Brian uh, Baltazar. He uh, was a co executive producer on The View. He executive produced the last hour of the Today Show, a executive producer at HGTV, just started his own production company uh, called Baltazar Entertainment. This guy has been on Wendy Williams. He knows everything about pop culture, at least I think he does. So he's here today. We're going to dish some dirt. We're going to get the latest in the TV trends. What's going on? I love it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hanging with Lang and Brian Baltazar. Hey, great to see you again. So excited you're here. You have no idea. So great to oh, be here. Thank you. Okay. So you, mister, you worked with Kathy Lee Gifford. And I asked you when you were last here, if you had to be trapped alive with Hoda or Kathy Lee or Jenna Bush or any of the women you worked with, you chose. Well, that was a hard one. I, I did choose Kathy Lee, but Hoda, it was neck and neck. But I have to say, like I said, if I went to jail, I would call Kathy Lee because she'd answer the phone and, and oh, bail dear. me out and then Bring me out and then forgive me. That's the oh, in that that's order. what it was. All right. Yeah. So it, I can't choose between the two of them. They're All so right. Fun. You're torn. No, You're torn. Sorry. So Brian, <laughs> everything pop culture pop goes the Wednesday. That's what. That's we're right. Talking. Happy pop Wednesday. Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. So um, you got a little Kathy Lee family news. Yes. So her lovely, just gorgeous and talented daughter, Cassidy, was married recently. Uh, she was engaged. We had heard in the news. Kathy Lee had announced it. Um, of course, now COVID changes a lot of the best laid plans as far as wedding plans, especially. I know two people myself that had to postpone their weddings. There's the beautiful couple, uh, Ben Bierda, um, If I'm, I hope I'm saying the name right. Um, it looks like Weirda. Weirda, Weirda sorry, oh, Ben Bierda. And they married in her his backyard. Yes. Um, because, you know, that that was what they could do. It's in his backyard in Michigan. Close family and friends were there. I can say firsthand that I did not get invited or I did not hear about it. Um, but, that, oh. you know, one thing I'll say, Kathy Lee is very savvy about keeping things hush-hush when they need to be. Um, you know, a lot of celebrities leak things so that they get the press. Um, right. She is not one of those people. She really does value her privacy and was not going to ruin, you know, or run the risk of anything getting out. Um, and... And I think that's pretty, I love, I love that about her. She does not um, play the gossip game. So she, she kept it really hush hush, which is great. The family was all there apparently, and they're going to have something bigger in the future, um, you know, kind of to commemorate the celebration of such a beautiful day. Well, I do hear that Kathy Lee was on a tractor trailer in probably her sprawling <laughs> estate when she made the announcement that her daughter was engaged. Um, she I was on a tractor. Yeah. 
Do you think she really mows the lawn? I really don't feel that that's that would happen. I, Let I me tell you. She, I'll tell you why she doesn't mow the lawn. She's not a person who's afraid of hard work, but her lawn is in in um, Greenwich is enormous. Like, it's half of Connecticut. Yeah, it's half it of Connecticut. Is, it is one of the most stunning homes I've ever stepped foot on. Really? Um, because it's on this like kind of, it's three sides are, are water. And it's just really outdoorsy. Also, she just loves the outdoors and she can look in three directions and see water. The place is gorgeous. She also has a, ta a talent, I should say, um, for decorating. She is really great at decorating and she sure. has a place just decorated impeccably. Um, so, but she also has this place in um, Franklin, Tennessee, which is really? kind of the opposite of that. Yeah, she loves Nashville. She loves Nashville. Mm. And um, she spends the bulk of her time there uh, prior to the COVID situation um, in this beautiful, beautiful brownstone that is also one of the most beautiful places I've ever stepped foot in. Just stunning. Okay, have you, oh, so I take it you've slept over, had slumber parties, maybe some mores. What you know, have you interesting. Had? I've never slept over, but I don't do sleepovers at people's houses because of my dogs. Um, she would oh certainly, God. I would be more than welcome to stay at her house, um, as would any person that comes to her house. She is open arms, welcomes them. So that wouldn't just be restricted to me, a lot of people. But I have two dogs and I cannot, one, I cannot trust them not to pee on something in someone else's house, that different environment. Right, They're going right. to pee on something. Um, and many of my friends have much more beautiful pieces of furniture than I. So uh, that makes me nervous. And they they can't be trusted to come back. They're wonderful dogs. Well, I love them. build a dog house that works for dogs and people together, like a little guest house with a doggy yeah. dog. Can't, Kathy Lee, get on that. Her family yeah. is gorgeous. I found a picture of uh, her with her son and daughter. The son right. looks just like Frank, doesn't he? Oh, he Frank really, Gifford. really does. And I will say they are the most um, polite people, just kind, generous, and polite. Those, I call them kids. They're grown ups. He's also engaged. He, I don't believe he's married yet. I know he's engaged. Um, and he was at this wedding. But uh, they are so kind. When there's a party, they say hello to everyone. They know everyone's name. They were brought, uh, you know, and you, yeah. it's funny because you notice that now when you see uh, someone who really like, knows how to work a room and be generous and kind and remember something about you. It's just pretty remarkable. I'm I impressed. like that. I do like that. You can tell that she is, other than when I did that gig for the Gracie Awards and I was hosting and I made fun of the Kardashians and she's really good friends with uh, Mama right. Kardashian, yeah. who I call Mama Shame Kim. on you. She stares, all of a sudden, nobody's paying attention. A thousand women in the room, they're like, who's she? Maureen's not famous. I don't know who she is. Maureen, they didn't even know my name. I told you, dead, like just eating, clink, 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 except for Alice and Janney, who was the most wonderful, just watched and paid attention. So all of a sudden I go, um, I just made a joke about Kim Kardashian, you know, and you know, it, it's a, it's just a tabloid headline. It wasn't me, it was just a tabloid. It was a tabloid. Okay. You know how they, they say, and I go, this mean yeah, tabloid, right. mean tabloid said, Kim depressed feels like blowing brains out. And I thought, well, how messy could that be? Okay. <laughs> Dead silence. Holy moly, mother of God. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's probably not going to like Didn't be her favorite that. joke, but you know, that's, comedy and it's also it's an, ex it's an expression of your hilarious sense of humor come on that is a good Edgy joke Mark. that was it but That's it wasn't for joke. me i don't really believe that she was going to do that it was just a tabloid being right. silly it was a yeah movie. yeah um, it's a great joke it speaks to how hilarious you are and it also speaks to how loyal she is she's loyal to her friends and family and i love that so i kudos to both of you for for staying true to who you are but now let's talk about this this is a little dishy dirty um dish the dirt okay now so we know that Kim uh, Kardashian's mother, Kris Jenner, goes about things a little more differently than Kathy, Lee's, uh, Kathy Lee does with her children. Kathy Lee is a born again Christian. I love how she handled her marriage with Frank when he was like with the airline lady. Class act. She's a class act. She really committed to her marriage. I just really respected how she handled that. That was her. Now, I don't know if her daughter was a virgin when she got married or not. I don't um, know that. Not my business. Not, I'm just saying these are things I think about, Brian, not you. Is that, think about. is that what you I, think about? Is that what you I, I swear I don't think about that. that. Totally. Well, of course it popped into my head. I just mentioned okay, it. Yeah. All right, let's move on from that, Brian. Let's not talk. Why did you bring that up? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, so, Chris Jenner, you're saying? Well, I just think they go about oh, yeah. their relationship well, with their daughter differently. They get along very well, but they're different people. Yeah, well, but she, right. Kathy Lee gets along with everybody. She really does. I but mean, I couldn't she, see her pimping out her daughters for perfume and makeup and letting the, her pose nude and supporting that. That's all I'm saying. Maybe she will. She they're totally to different. They're totally different. different in many ways. Yes. And um, and both. I, I don't know Chris Jenner truthfully. I don't know her at all. Um, and so, 
I, I can't speak to that. I know I, I'm not. Uh, I don't watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Truthfully, I've there are a lot of shows. It. Here's what's so interesting, Maureen. Yes, is that, uh, <laughs> I. It's so interesting this kind of cognitive dissonance I have being a pop culture person when I realize now that pop culture is the Kardashians and the Housewives, and these are shows that I don't watch. Um, so I feel like maybe I'm. It's I, I have a wonderful writer on Pop Goes the Week by the name of Chris Soretz, and he's talented and funny, and he manages all of those things that I don't have the mental bandwidth for, um, which is great because everyone has their own thing that they love, and right. so 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 um, so it's nice to be able to share that that space with him because he's really funny. He he knows every housewife. There are many of them. I I would be in the room with them and I wouldn't know who it is. So I sometimes feel like I don't, I'm not worthy of the pop culture guru title anymore. <laughs> well, what would you like? Well, your show, how do people find pop goes the week? You can just say pop goes the week.com or you can, uh, yeah, that's it. Pop goes the week.com. I'm also, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm now loving TikTok, even though I'm like, every, I'm old enough to be everyone's grandfather on TikTok talk, but I love TikTok. I don't do the dances. I kind of make fun of myself on TikTok. That's what I'm better at. I'm better at make, making fun of myself than making fun of other people. Yeah, no, nobody wants to make fun of other people. Okay, sometimes I do. I mean, some people do. Yeah, but it's a good guess. Yeah. Sometimes that's funny. Sometimes you can't help it. You don't right. want to hate people. Some people deserve it. Some, I, I'm just going to say, it. some like people it. have it coming. Some people have it's it coming. It's not it coming. Um, <laughs> so funny. My guess is Brian Baltazar, but Baltazar. But let me ask you this, though. So yes. when, uh, when you think that, you know, you are this Pop Goes the Week guy. You have been on Wendy Williams. You've been on mm -hmm. all these shows talking pop culture. So what do you feel yeah. your area of expertise in pop culture is? I do love I do love the culture of film, television, music, and the goings on of celebrity. Um, what I don't really necessarily follow is docu docu soaps. Yeah. Um, because I think maybe I know too much about television production where I want to call out some of the things like here's the reality of and, and and listen I appreciate what I appreciate about Lisa Rinna I will say I really yes. think Lisa Rinna is a very smart woman because she was on a daytime soap and she saw that daytime soaps are 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 not performing like they used to right yeah. um, so she went on a nighttime soap I mean the, the Housewives is a nighttime soap. You I know, do because, have to admit, I do watch The Housewives of Beverly Hills. Right. I do. <laughs> yeah. I know, so, it's so, so, so you know what I'm saying? If they really hated each other that much, they wouldn't hang out. Like, wouldn't you? I uh, mean, some people are gluttons for punishment. But you understand that this is a contrived situation where they're at dinner together for the sole purpose of having arguments. So, well, of course uh, it's contrived. Yes, it's a total soap opera. And I right. like Lisa Rinna, too. Now, I did, the reason I get reeled into this, I do have to defend my Myself, is a comic named Bernadette yes. Pauly, whom I love very, yes. very much. Yes, I, I was staying at her house um, when I got unmarried and just crying on her couch. And we were going to go out. She's like, well, 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 wait, I just have to watch this. And I go, what are we watching? I go, oh, you're kidding me. We got to stay in to watch this. Are you kidding me? Right. Are you nuts? And then I'm like, okay, then what happens? Then what happens? <laughs> <laughs> what happens? So I got I, real then. Genius. I'm jealous that I didn't think of it. Like, but, and I, I kudos to Andy Cohen who built an empire for Bravo with, with Bravo on, on that, you know, like good on them. Um, I find that I, two things at night I can't watch. Well, one of the things I can't watch are arguing. And the two places you get that are on the housewives and on the news. I can't watch <laughs> the shouting and screaming. I have a very, I absorb, I sound like Shirley MacLaine. I absorb that energy, more. I absorb the energy. I absorb the energy. By the way, Maureen. I can't watch Gore and all that. People are like, Maureen, watch love, Killing, go ahead. Sorry. I just love the name Maureen. That's as an aside, but go on. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I'm glad it's not Karen right now. I feel so bad for, I know really great girls named Karen. Women it's not a good Karen. time to be Karen. Yeah. Isn't that weird how that, the whole culture of Karen as a meme and a, and a now an iconically infamous hate, hated figure in society. I, it's unfortunate because I get what they're saying. They're, it's a, it's a, you know, for an entitled white gal, but I know so many, um, you know, activists and smart women who, who are so supportive of black lives matters. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't like when now the news is doing it, like just, you know, anyway, it's a weird, we are living in very strange times and, and, um, okay. and yeah. And it's interesting, the power of memes. Like, I mean, Karen is a meme. It started out as a meme mm -hmm. and how I think we underestimate the power of a viral photograph with a funny caption. 
I mean, think about how long. Yeah, go ahead. Maybe in Ireland they're calling them Maureens. I don't know. Yeah, right. Uh, and, I don't I mean, know. Think, think about like um, I'm trying to think of the like Corona beer. Like people cannot separate Corona beer from the virus. Like sales went down of Corona beer. Now back in the 80s, there used to be a diet candy called cool. AIDS. Do you remember? <laughs> AIDS. Right? I know. Yeah. And there's a commercial still on YouTube where they're like, mm, thanks to AIDS, uh, the weight is pouring off. And it's uncomfortable <laughs> to watch. The comic in us is like, oh, oh my God, God, oh my God. Oh my God. It's so crazy, and right? Only now can you watch that and be like, okay, that's kind of funny. But like entire because of people's inability to see through a pop culture separate pop culture or a meme from a, a, a karen being one of them that candy being another like entire businesses and ways of life are ruined you know well, so yeah it is and i will tell you i didn't drink corona anyway i mean it's water with yellow dye in it i mean right. whatever i like a beer, <laughs> it's beer. Like the color of pee. Yeah. Just before I'm speaking with Brian Baltasar, before I do my a little break, I want to say to you, um, it's funny you brought up Andy Cohen, and uh, I mean he does he has done programming that's very successful, and yeah. that's what happens live is very successful. He has a lazy eye that he seems to be in denial about because somebody said what's with the eye, and he was like, my eye, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, you and Cory Booker, it kind of goes a little <laughs> askew. That's all right, it doesn't matter. I just think that's okay. Right. I'm askew. <laughs> yes, I mean it's just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. This is terrible lighting. Look at this. The hair is curled. I don't know. Oh my God. You have to know who you are. It's fine. Right. So right. You know, Andy Collins. I'm sorry. I'm dishing my dirt. This is Dish my it. Dish it. This is my, your show. That's my why I'm hanging right. with Langan. My, hanging with Langan. That's right. Hanging with Langan. But my views are not necessarily yours. They are not shared okay. by my views. are yours, right? Retweets are not endorsements. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and why can't they be, honestly? We don't need to say that all the time. It's implied. Don't waste the character space on retweets or not endorsements. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I love having you on. You make me laugh. Andy sure. Cohen, I say, and I say this, you know, with my sense of humor, I say that he is a misogynist for pitting all these women against each other, but they are opportunists. Oh, they are babbling they are more than happy for the opportunity he has given them a platform and they call him they are devastated when that is taken away so listen if if everyone hated it they wouldn't watch and the show wouldn't be on like networks are not in the business of putting on shows that people don't watch you know well, so I, I, they you, it you you brought up Lisa uh, Rinna before, and I do like her because she's very open. Like she's real. Like you know, she's like, "Honey, damn right, I'm doing this show." And she goes, "I wore Depends. I did a Depends commercial. I'm doing whatever. Oh, yeah. it's my family. I don't give a crap." So and I do. Bethany Frankel too. Like, look at what she's done with it. Like, I love the people that say that take an opportunity like this one, where people have very strong opinions about it, and Bethany's turned it into an empire. Empire. And I remember when I was at the Today Show, and they were trying to book her on the fourth hour, and we passed. She wasn't on the she wasn't on the housewives yet. She was a nutritionist who wanted to be on the Today Show, and she wasn't on as much as she would have liked to have been. And now, now look at her. Who's gotten the last laugh there? Let me tell you something, Bethany Frankel. For those who you don't know, was on the Housewives of New York. I know too much. I get mad about the Housewives of New Jersey because they grew up in the next town from me, and I'm the one who developed my brain when I should have danced with poles while I still had the body to do so. <laughs> but anyway, these people, you know what I mean? Like, there's not a book in, in their house. But whatever, yeah, except shame on you. Yeah, I can't. It's, it's too <laughs> much on me. The rage I have, but. Bethany Frankel was, I thought, a very unlikable, annoying housewife of New York. But then she started to grow. She did her business while all these people were looking down at her because she was just a working class broad. This woman, my respect for what she's doing to help people all over the country. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Yeah. God yeah. bless her. So yes. um, hold on, Brian. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, I'm taking a little bit of a break here to let you know. I bring you the show Monday through Friday. Uh, three o'clock Eastern noon Pacific support the show. If you will, I'll keep them coming. It's paypal.me forward slash Mo Langan or Venmo at Mo Langan. And I bring you great content tomorrow. I have history tales with Peter Bales. Friday, we have hell gigs and Monday, uh, Tom Dreesen, who was on the tonight show for more than 60 times. He opened for Frank Sinatra for 13 years. This man is an icon at the beginning of stand-up comedy. And he was one of the, um, he fought for comics to get paid in LA back in the day. Uh, now, granted, the price hasn't gone up since. So hopefully when I talk to him, he, he's out with the book. He was one of the first comics, the first, with a black-white comedy duo 
with Tim Reed. So it was Tom and Tim. So we're going to talk to him. I'm so happy that he's um, agreed to come on Hanging with Langan. And, and on Tuesday, we have the incredible Kathy Ladman, who everybody loves, of course. So support the show. Um, be a sugar daddy. I don't care. I don't care. So much, whatever you need, I'll do. I don't even care anymore. Um, <laughs> so true. And if you want to sponsor, it's so ridiculous. If you want to sponsor the show, just contact me. And of course, I have my full clothing line, my full clothing. Listen to me. What do I think? I mean, I'm insane. My full clothing line. I want to see your comments. So just go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. You can make a comment on anything we're talking about. Love seeing everybody watching. Laura Jean, Carol, Eric, Grace, oh, Elena Cohen, um, Steve, Barry, thank you. People I grew up with, people I've known through the business. Um, Bob Johnson, always, he supports the show constantly. Kathleen and Mill Valley. So we get Sandy Ellers. We get people from all over. So this is a national show, which I love. Uh, one more thing. Here is the mask that could be yours. Don't make me hate you. I wear these wherever I go and I bring my don't make me hate you cards. All you have to do is go to my store. It's don't make me hate you.com or molangan.com. Uh, so uh, yes, back to my guest. <laughs> I love it. Walter's our uh, total pop culture fellow. We're talking all things pop culture. Uh, you know, this guy, he has his own production company now, Baltazar. Uh, entertainment, having worked with the Today Show, Kathy Lee, uh, The View, HGTV, and he has here for me with Pop Goes the Wednesday, pop culture. All right, so let's talk about what's going on now in this day of Corona. How are shows uh, making it work, Brian? This is fascinating to me. We were just as you, we were just talk talking about soap operas, and this story about how soap operas are going to start back up production to me is fascinating. Oh, so Bold and the Beautiful, one of the most popular soap what operas one? on television, Bold and the Beautiful, uh, the Bold and the Beautiful. Yes. They are resuming production like right now, Wednesday. I don't know if that means um, today or next Wednesday. Yes. And there's a story going around about their their practices. All, all TV shows and networks right now are trying to figure out their best practices on how they're going to continue watching wow. and continue producing television and films. Um, and we touched on this a little bit last time. Um, and and because the, the truth is, is like there have been some interesting things happening on network television with Zoom and with mm -hmm. cell shop stuff, but there is an expiration date on how long people are going to want to watch that. And, and networks are very well aware of that. So Bold and the Beautiful has released information on how they're going to shoot. Now, obviously, soap operas are all about steamy, Love scenes, romance, fights. Well, listen to this. So first of all, there, there are group scenes. They're going to try and minimize the people in scenes, keep them six feet apart. But what if they're like a couple that's in love and having a love scene? Love. They are going to have. So, for example, if I'm the soap opera actor and my wife is going to on the show is going to caress my face, they're going to use his real wife. Her hand, she's going to be the bottled body double. They're going to use their actual spouses and partners as body doubles in love scenes. Now, um, wow. in some cases, they'll do what they used to do is pan over to the fireplace. Do you remember when it was like sexy romantic scene and the, you know that they're going to make love, but this is still the 70s or 60s. So they would pan over to the fireplace and it would be implied. They're still going to do a little bit of that. Um, but they're going to have these husbands and wives of these actors come in and be the other hand on their face or wrapped around their body in cases because they already are obviously. Well, this could help them. marriages re in real life. Right. I mean, this could be the first time they're getting any in a long time. We don't know. <laughs> It'd be interesting though if like one of their partners on the show is like really young and the like, hand that reaches over is like <laughs> 30 years older, you know. <laughs> do you remember when you were a kid when you would do, would you ever do that thing where you would like make out with yourself? yourself. Yes. Yeah. And, and I was like, I was realizing that this is kind of that's Ooh, hysterical. It's not creepy at all, right? Not That's creepy. one of the things they're gonna do. Um, and they're also say, for example, they're at lunch. They're shooting a scene at lunch. They will shoot the one angle with the other person not even there and then cut it back and forth. They won't show a two shot of them. Wow. And you know who's on? I don't watch The Bold and Beautiful, but because my friend got me into the Housewives of Beverly Hills and, and I'm like have Stockholm Syndrome now, I'm yeah. identifying with my captors. Uh, <laughs> Denise Richards is on that. I like her. I know. I like Denise Richards. Let me tell you, I wrote an article about her a couple of years ago, back when she was, you know, when Charlie Sheen was in the height of his chaos, you know? Yes, yeah, that, that tiger wrote this, like, uh, Most of my pieces, I have two dogs that just help themselves. I love the dogs. So if they see a squirrel, the show's over, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so 
she she was kind of struggling through this whole, I mean, she was taking the high road during some of Charlie's yes. biggest antics. Yes. And I wrote this essay out of nowhere. I wrote an essay called In Defense of D Denise Richards. And I, it was a classic case. I don't know if you've had this where you're, you're on the subway and you come up and you've got like six voicemails or something like what's happening, who died? You know, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. um, my phone just started blowing up. Um, Denise Richards shared it. And it just, you know, I went from having a website that was getting, you know, I don't know, a couple thousand or two, a few thousand hits a day, just like skyrocketed after that. And um, wow, I'm and, gonna write, I'm gonna write about her too. Yes, I mean, I will say, there's so, celebrities are so used to being villainized and criticized oh, yeah. that when you write something thoughtfully, because honestly, she. She, her career suffered because she was staying with the kids. Like people like to say, oh, that career is over. And she's probably doing the housewives because of other, you know, like we don't see how hard it is for some of these actors and actresses to keep that momentum going and still keep their family and personal life going. And, and I know I feel their pain. I know what it's like to get behind a Yeti mic every day and try to just keep the momentum going. You know, <laughs> right? it's, it's hard. It's very rough. No, she seems like a class act gal. I got to tell you, though, uh, now I feel really bad that I made fun of um, the Kardashian mama and that now I, I question somebody's uh, virginity. I take it back. Well, why? But that don't you find though, I find myself doing this all the time, waking up the next day being like, did I say that? How bad was that? Was that funny though? But how many people, would you say 60% of the room liked it? Like, <laughs> I, I mean, somebody's got to say these things. Truthfully, we got, we got, if we just give love letters to celebrities, then that's the, oh, it's going to be a real problem. It's just an escapism. It really is. Hello, Elizabeth Langan, my sister-in-law, my oh, sister, hey. Anna, and Brad Zito from high school. Wow. Donna Coney Island. A lot of really great people. Yeah, are good crowd. You have a very good looking crowd from these. Well, programs. yeah, I don't hang out with crap. I don't hang no, out. Yeah, I know no, anybody got time for that. Looks matter. And looks <laughs> <laughs> you look like Lucy with these this orange hair. Um, you guys, I want to see your comments. So come on, Brian Baltazar. He is my uh, guest. He's everything pop culture. This is Pop Goes the Wednesday. We're so lucky to have him. Get on the Streamyard. Just go streamyard.com forward Facebook. Click on the blue. Only once you have to do it, and then anytime you click into the show you'll be able to uh, just comment on my uh, stream art so I can look right here and see it. Right, Francis? Thank you, Francis. Um, this, I just like, I want to connect with you people. I mean, some of you not, but most of you. Um, of you. So there's a little dirt. I don't know if you know this. Denise Richards and Brandy Glanville supposedly allegedly had a um, woman to woman uh, love affair or tryst or something. And Denise is recently married. This, what do you know? You got anything? I, I don't know that to be true or untrue, that, but but you know what would you classify as like a serious tryst? Would you say first of all for women the men like if, I don't think there's much scandal for her new husband. He probably thinks that's amazing. Like ooh, let me get in on that. You know, like well, I don't know <laughs> maybe. That, but if it's if it's it, not but another if it's way around for women and their husbands, like ooh, you hooked up with another man. Ooh, like I don't think women. No, that's I, not happening. That ain't happening. Um, I just wonder, okay, hey, big, the Academy Awards, what's going on with the Oscars? They're, they're moving them about, uh, so they're currently were scheduled for February 25th or 28th, and now they're going down to April. Because I don't know if you've noticed, nothing's come out. Like a few things have come out on digital platforms like Netflix, but very few studios have decided to move on a digital release. Um, the Invisible Man with Elizabeth Moss was one of them that kind of released right when it uh, when this mm. kind of was in the heat of it. Um, and also... Um, Trolls 2, by the way, Trolls 2 made more money because they released it um, on Netflix and Apple movies, not Netflix, on Apple or all the different platforms because everyone just wanted their kids to shut up for two hours. <laughs> you know, literally. And they weren't going to take them to the movie theater. So they actually made more money by releasing it digitally than they would have in theaters. And there's a controversy about that because then the studio was like... We're going to start doing more of that. We're going to be di doing digital releases and AMC theaters or one of the, one of the theater chains was like, yeah, okay, bye. We're not going to have any of your movies in our theaters then. So they were like, so then the studio was like, Oh no, we're just saying we're going to do, oh, blah, blah, blah. you know, so now like there's this big war going on between the studios and the movie theater chains because movie theater chains really don't want this to happen. They don't want to see movies go digital. Long story short, the Oscars, because so few movies have been released, and, and the BAFTAs, the British version of the Academy Awards, are sliding down by a few months and extending the deadlines for submissions because 
a lot of the movies that you know were either in mid production or they just didn't want to release them in this current scenario. They want them to be in theaters. Um, they they haven't happened. So we're 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 in a very strange year in so many senses, and entertainment is a big one. Um, so they're going to slide everything down. It used to be February. Now it's going to be late April. It's going to be a shame not to have fifteen award ceremonies. In I know. A row honoring I feel a sense people. of loss. I feel, I feel such a loss. sense of loss. Um, I do feel a sense of loss too. <laughs> um, <laughs> Brian Balthazar is my guest and you can follow him. He has a new company, Balthazar Entertainment, and you can follow him on all the dot com, as my Irish mother calls it. Um, <laughs> she goes, it's all the dot com, you know. And I was I'm just talking. amazed that your mother, you said, says that. Yeah. My father um, doesn't know how to run a computer like that. He says run it like it's a, a piece of factory equipment, you know, <laughs> like it's, like it's a, a 1920s crank car, you know, right? It's an engine, you know, yeah. or the lawnmower. <laughs> Okay, you know, I don't know how to run this computer. We have a couple more things to talk about. I love that you're here. I feel very honored. Thank oh, you. Oh my so God, much I love being here. I do. I love that you're here. Um, okay, so the couple of other things I wanted to talk to you about. By the way, uh, my friend insisted I watch Killing Eve, my best friend. A little too much. I would love it if they just didn't stab people in the eye and I had to see that. Like, well, then, yeah, you're probably not the show for you. <laughs> I know. But that actress, I don't know, the head actress, Jenny Comer, or I don't know her name. Yeah, so Sandra Oh, and now I'm forgetting her last name, too. She Comer? is remarkable. Yeah, yeah I, British you know, actress. Uh, I had to watch some video clips of her not as not um, Oksana, so that I right. could tell that she was like she a was real she's really like. She's now, so likable that I'm like, okay, she's normal. I can watch a little bit more of this. What's amazing is Phoebe Waller-Bridge is the writer on that show. And she wrote, oh my gosh, this is where my brain freezes on me. Um, she won an, uh, an Emmy for her series, which is completely completely different. It's a comedy um, that she wrote and starred in. So she's got this dark side. She's also, Phoebe, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who writes the scripts for Killing Eve, um, is also consulting to the new James Bond film to make it feel more female friendly mm -hmm. and, oh, and female aware, just like cognizant of what like, you know, cause we know the Bond films, they were always like, you know, her name is Pussy Galore and the, you know, the way they talked to, <laughs> I don't know if you've watched Mad Men. Did you watch Mad Men? This I didn't, like, but I, you know. Well, when you watch that, it certainly is reflective of the 50s and 60s that, that they're, they're portraying, but it's sometimes really cringeworthy the way the men speak to the women on that show. Now, it's scripted. I know what they're doing. It's corporate America. These were not these were not the same times, and women were treated this way, but it's really hard to watch that. But they're trying not to let a, a franchise like the Bond franchise feel dated in the way it uh, portrays and treats women on the air. Do you the, recall the, the comedy that Phoebe uh, wrote? If it comes to you, let me know. It's going to come to me. Yeah. And it's, I have to say, I'm going to, and it's only coming, it's only losing me because it's happening live. That's why. Do you ever have that happen? Of course um, I have. Of course. Um, it's really more. worth watching and it's hilarious. Um, and it's on, it's on Amazon Prime and it was called, oh, she was in, She's working on the stars. What's wrong? Fleabag. Fleabag. Oh, Fleabag. I hear. Yes, I, I read the book, and my sister just, is even better than the first. Ah, oh, my sister had just write, uh, written Fleabag, but I didn't realize. I thought I don't know what she was talking about. Yeah. Uh, everybody's <laughs> writing Fleabag now. Everybody's not now, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> she's the best. And guys, share the show. Share, share. It's only fair. It shows oh, you care. You, Start yeah. a watch party. We're gonna wrap up in a few minutes because I don't want to take too much of your time. But um, Thirty Rock. What's happening with Thirty Rock? 30 Rock is making a really unusual comeback. It is coming back for one special, and it's actually NBC's way of presenting the 2021 fall season lineup. So Liz Lemon, Alec, well, Tina Fey, Alec Baldwin, oh, um, yeah. those characters are uh, Tracy Morgan. They're coming back in, as their original characters um, to, to kind of talk about what's happening on the NBC. I don't know how they're scripting this. It just came out today, but I was a big fan of 30 Rock. I'm a huge fan of Tina Fey. Oh. Um, Love and her. so, uh, and a lot of people, and 30 Rock is having another renaissance because you can stream it now and people are binge watching anything they can that's really great. And that's one of them. So people are taking the time right now to to um, binge watch things from the very beginning. And uh, Tina Fey's 30 Rock is one of them. And the thing and is- she also has a series coming up of her own too. I think it's called The Mayor. Um, that's going to be on NBC as well. All right, we'll check that out. Um, well, another time when you come back, let's talk about what's worth binge watching and all of that. Yes. And, oh, uh, I love that. Oh, we could go on and on. Because then people get really involved in that, but I don't want to go there today because that's a whole nother segment in and of itself. But Alec Baldwin, who um, 
seems like a real asshole off stage is so talented on stage. He's always getting in fights. He's beating people up. I, I mean, he now has 12 new kids. Calm down. I know. Remember, I mean, I still over? can't, I still can't let go of that time. I mean, he, I, I used to work in retail in college and he came into the store I worked in and it was just. Did he charming. beat you up? Oh, he no, you no, no, okay. because I wasn't his daughter. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember when he called his you know daughter? You know, you're a pig, Brian. You're a disgusting pig. That's I mean, what he would say to his daughter. I, I, it's hard for me to let go of that moment. And when they roasted him on Comedy Central, uh, his daughter roasted him and certainly didn't neglect that. Uh, it was hard for me to. It's hard for me to move past that. And but for those it? of you who don't know, Alec Baldwin years ago, his daughter Ireland with Kim Basinger was younger. And I guess she wasn't calling him back or going to see him or something. And they were do so she he left this horrible message about 10 plus years ago. Like, you know, you're a pig. You're nothing but a pig. You're in uh, it was awful. But, you know, just some anger issues. But maybe the yoga lady woman he's married to now is Hillary uh, or yeah. Hilaria. It's one of the Hilaria, them. Hilaria, which I mean, as a comic, don't you just go right towards hilarious? I mean, it just, Everybody uh, does. I just had a baby again recently. And I don't know about you. I mean, there is a point where you start to do the math where I'm like, when he's driving, when he's going to college, like I will be like, when you start doing this and, and he is, I just, there's a point. Don't you want to just like enjoy life? Well, I think I too, when you said he's driving, I know you mean the kid I'm thinking, uh, yeah. Alec won't be able to drive anymore because of the cataracts right. no, or the milky right. white eyes. You know? Yes, right. When the kid's out of diapers, he'll be getting into them. So it's really there a we nice go. transition. There, that's nice. what we're talking about. But these old guys, it doesn't matter how old they are. It doesn't matter. They'll get a young chick as long as you yeah. know this. You know what I'm saying? It's right. over. Yeah. We've seen this movie before, Larry yeah. King. It's just getting old. It's just the series. Um, okay, so, oh, is SpongeBob gay? Well, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is unrelated to pop culture. It's just a question you've been meaning to ask me because all gays know, right? We just know. Oh, you do? <laughs> you um, stop me. You prompted me for that. I'm going to beat you with a wooden spoon. Is that a good question? I'm so glad you asked. Oh, good, so, yes. <laughs> so, you know, uh, June is Pride Month and Nicole, Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon, uh, Nickelodeon posted a tweet that read celebrating pride with the LGBTQ community and their allies this month and every month. And so the tweet um, featured uh, one of their transgendered actors, a bisexual cartoon character and SpongeBob. So um, one might interpret that as SpongeBob being an ally. Mm -hmm. Or that SpongeBob is gay, uh, which you know, or an ally, say, or an ally. You know, sometimes the the gays. I'm one of them, so I can the say the gays. The gays. Um, like to be like like to bring folks into the like club, whether or not they are like, oh yeah, they're gay. You know, like some. You know, we've seen we've heard rumors about actors, and like we like to take some of the some of the actors as ours, even though it's not public. But um, I think uh, some folks wanted to say, you know, SpongeBob, yeah, he's a member of the tribe. Um, I think he's at the very least gay friendly. I think Bikini Bottom, you can't live in a place called Bikini Bottom without being at least a little gay friendly. Yes, or a bottom. Here's, right. You know, <laughs> the Westboro Baptist Church is going to hear this because they're, they're big followers of mine. And they're going to say, Brian says they try to bring people into the gay tent. They're well, going to think they're trying to go out and convert people to gayism. I don't think we do that as much as we used to. And I'm sure this is one of those things tomorrow. I wonder if you I'm going to get in trouble for it. Um, but we used to, like, I think that we, the gay community, used to be like, that, you know, like, yes, that person's gay without any evidence to suggest that they are. Like, um, and now there are far more allies that are publicly allies but i think sometimes there are always there's always been a few actors that were like oh yeah they're totally gay and we'd have no we'd have no basis for it other than well i don't know like that we want them to be i, I don't know but um but, but you're not converting like, people you're not going no, out not, there that, that's oh, what i mean, would say you're welcoming listen, you're I, I, I think I've been to a club or two where we're like, oh, well, let's invite that one over to the other side. I'd like there's, yeah. So sometimes we're trying to convert, but it's, it's, it's really, you're not born in that general, way. So not in general. we can make a good college try if they're cute enough. Question, <laughs> Brian, question. He's so crazy. I'm going to ask you this question. <laughs> Don't let me rail, forget before we, oh, we have two quick things to talk about that we didn't get to. Okay. First of all, quickly, I just got to um, ask you, okay, let me just do my quick commercial. Um, yeah. <laughs> is this what you did on the View when you were a co-executive producer? <laughs> is yeah. it, is right. that <laughs> just like zoom out of the shot. Okay, take your commercial. 
<laughs> you guys go support the show, paypal.me forward slash Mo Langen or Venmo at Mo Langen. Uh, that's how you can support it. I bring you a show Monday through Friday. Uh, you're very welcome. You can follow me on the dot com at Mo Langen, Maureen Langen. Oh, don't make me hate you as well. Look, I have a whole line of uh, products called Don't Make Me Hate You. Very big hit when I go into Costco, even though I've only gone there three times in my life. And I will show you the full, look at this, everything, onesies, t-shirts, all kinds of things, clocks, everything. Look at this, coasters get cool in the waves of the pool. You'll have fun. So come on over. All right. Uh, that's what I wanted to share with you. And if you want to sponsor the show, look, that could be you right there, just sponsoring the show going, wow, Maureen, I'm so lucky to be associated with you. And I would say, that's right. You're right. Um, yeah, that's it. So, um, but you did, I don't want to go, I don't want to bury the lead of our last story. You talked about, okay, SpongeBob, is he gay? Bikini bottom. But did you see there's a transgender cartoon character and a bisexual cartoon character? Or was it just for the, I, I didn't know. Was a trans actor. And then there is a bisexual character, um, an anime hero that is bisexual and has huh. been in- An anime? In an anime? Like an animated? Yeah, anime? Anim anime is a form of animation, um, oh. mostly um, Japan, uh, produced in Japan. Um, oh. And anime, it's like, uh, oh gosh, this is, a, this is a whole other conversation, which is okay. a whole like subculture of animation that's really like wildly colorful and, and um, heroes and villains and subplots and really detailed characters, both in print and in on television. And there is a, a bisexual character there, but there's also been a bisexual superhero, but Nick Nickelodeon, I believe they were probably just fo focusing on the ones that are on their network specifically, but Nickelodeon has not followed up requests for comment about SpongeBob's sexuality, so, nor will they. So is this bisexual superhero like targeted toward children? Um, anime is has a very large adult uh, following, yeah, yeah. and um, there is a, my understanding, and I don't have all the info. I don't want to be we can visit that inaccurate enough. about this, but I do right. believe that you know it's not an explicitly portrayed behavior on the show, other than that it has been expressed that she likes girls. All right. like something like that. And I, I, I don't, I, I'm careful. I'm only cautious because I just, I don't want to be inaccurate, inaccurate or wrong That's about right. it. That's um, right. But, um, but yeah, this is, this is, uh, you know, a wonderful way for people to see it in an, in an innocuous way. That's not like, you know, I mean the, the criticism, which is always just to me, hilariously ironic when they're like, don't, don't rub your sexuality in my face, you know, just in its existence, it seems to be rubbing it in their face. Um, and this is, um, you know, this is just someone who happens to be bisexual on a, on a cartoon. Right, right. But there's no, you know, they're not, the, the show isn't about dating. The show isn't about sex. It's a, just happens to be a person who's bisexual. Well, before we go, let's talk about vagina. Um, yes, please. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> Is what this in your I, card? <laughs> this is my business card. I give this to everybody. If they don't want to buy up my, this is, um, this smells like my vagina, not mine. That would be anyone's, but particularly Gwyneth Paltrow. I know. It's, I got to learn how to do this full screen. Oh, this is good. This is how you do it. I was just trying to figure out how to get a, a sniff. Oh my God. That is so insane. <laughs> Where did you go? That's probably, is this the first time you ever smelled a vagina? I don't know. Um, you know, I don't believe that it is. I mean, it's been a long time though. <laughs> well, you can't see the expression on my face. <laughs> <laughs> but the vagina was just on your face. <laughs> it's always in the last five minutes where they ask the gotcha questions, right? <laughs> but, no, we should have gotten to this earlier. But she's now out with a new one called This Smells Like My Orgasm. Yes. That's Gwyneth Paltrow's candle line. Um, the thing I liked about, I did not smell her vagina candle, but what's interesting is I heard her being interviewed and she said it was supposed to be kind of feminist heart, you know, punk rock kind of, Hey man, like pink, you know, that yeah. kind of, I, I didn't get that yeah. at first until she said it. Yeah. Right. Um, what would your orgasm smell like? I don't even know. I, well, why doesn't she just make something that sounds like it? I don't know why, right. like a ringtone. <laughs> Well, my orgasm candle would basically be like the real thing. It just doesn't last. Like whatever, you know, the, the, the smell wouldn't last long, whatever. It would it be like, Wee! the wick would yeah, be. Exactly. I find most scented candles don't really emit much scent. 
I don't like I don't like smelly stuff. I like very light lavender, or light rose. All right, listen. Will you ever come back and hang out with me again? Will I? I'm not leaving. You, I have to. I have to like shut me down. You have to shut the window down. I will lo- come back anytime. Would I you? love you and I love your show. Uh, thank you. And you know what? We're working to get it on more platforms. I have a meeting next week, so this way I would love for you to come back anytime you want. We can okay. make it a regular segment, but I, you know, we can be go shorter, whatever you want. I yes. want you to be happy in life. Oh my God. Well, definitely, you're going to want to show them the clip from our. Order orgasm conversation for the for the meeting so just yes, dub, this, dub out, this now yes and um I'm, <laughs> thank I'm you i'm gonna tell so them that you had a vagina on your face i'm gonna just tell them that that brian likes vagina on his face Ooh, look over here <laughs> oh whoa, whoa, wait wait go 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 do what you were doing <laughs> You're so insane. Okay. Oh, you make me laugh. I had so many oh, fun. Thank you for having me. Uh, Pop Goes the Week. That is how you can follow him. Just to search that as well just as. Just my name. I'm on everything. I'm on the TikTok. I'm on the Brian Balthazar on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, which I'm on right now. And, and the, the Snapchat, whatever the next thing is. I'll he's on the dot right com now. wherever you want to find the him. Interweb. He's on the he's on the interweb. Um, all right, listen and support the show, you guys, so I can keep this coming for you. Because in oh, keep it coming in line with uh, this candle. All right, um, let's see, orgasm mm-hmm. candle. All right, so we'll see you again soon, right, my darling? Yes, thank you so much. All right, and thank you guys for hanging with us. Hang a minute so I can say goodbye to you off off, off stage. I will. I'll be in the green room. <laughs> He'll be in the green room. Yeah, let's put you in the green room. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Peter Bales with History Tales. Next Monday, Tom Driesen, just an icon in the comedy world, and Kathy Ladman. Uh, I'll see you guys around like a donut. Bye. Off to Connecticut.